So the next thing we need to do is to generate Green's functions. So um, first of all, we'll look So you'll see that there's an extra file here that wasn't present before because uh, we're changing the problem type. The ones that we've been looking at so far are all the time dependent problem type. We're going to switch to a specific type that's called greens functions. So that's on the command line. You can just change that with this um, setting right here. So when you do that, Pilot will automatically read a file called greensfunctions.config. So that's a separate file that gives um, settings that are specific to generating the greens functions. We can look at that. The other thing you'll notice is that these, these are now different. This is, um, this is a sub-facility of Pilot app, so we're like one level down. So this is the problem type now. And so rather than time dependent, this is Green's functions. And then we specify some of the same settings that we did for the other. We, we tell it the interfaces is slab, fault ID is 100. We change the, um, the fault type, so now, or this is now fault cohesive impulses, where before it was, uh, it was fault cohesive kinematic. So um, we do this, but so that's the one change that we make. Uh, that's, so these are all the same. We give it the, this is our labels for the fault and its edge, quadrature information. Okay, now uh, we're, giving it, um, uh, let's see, so we're giving it just a uniform database for amplitude of fault slip impulses. So what this means for um, every, all of the uh, fault vertices in the fault, now Pilot will loop through all of those and generate amplitudes or based on what you've given it here. And we're just giving it unit amplitudes. So that's a uh, slight, yeah, a little bit different. This implies looping over all the um, impulses. Then we also, we just give it the fields output. So here, rather than fault slip, it's just called impulse amplitude. And then what down here, we're turning off the state variable output. And the reason is because when you're generating all these greens functions, if you had state variable output for each of those, you would have huge files. So and there's no real need for those. Okay, now the other two files, so there's step 07A and step 07B, they're pretty much identical, except one is for the left lateral component and one is for the um, up dip component. The reason I separated it is because usually when you're running these, you can, you can generate things twice as fast if you separate it, otherwise you have twice as many things to loop over. So like I usually run these on a cluster. And so what that means is you can run each job in parallel, but you can do like I grab a few sets of nodes for the up dip component, a few sets of nodes for the left lateral component, and you're done twice as fast. So that's why I've separated them. So here's for, um, yep, so this is the left lateral component. Uh, just our normal stuff. All we're doing here, we're just telling it degree of free, impulse degree of freedom zero, which is the left lateral component. Uh, uh, let's see, I did that twice. Um, we'd already done that in Green's functions, but, uh, Let's see, so we're turning off, also we're turning off the vertex data for the entire domain for the same reason that, um, that we did it for state variables because you don't need all of that output. You could do the same thing for the ground surface. In this case, we, we've left that output in case you wanna look at it. 
but we do want the output at the continuous GPS sites. So here we're, um, okay, we've done this again too. So all the uh, coordinate system info for the uh, continuous GPS sites, there's just our output. So that's, there's really not a lot here. So it's um, telling it which impulse, we've given it some information about the uh, GPS sites and then which output we want. So what I'm gonna do, let me find the other, oops. Okay, so we'll run one in one window and one in the other. Um, and we'll okay. So while those are running, I'm just going to quit out of uh, Paraview and then just open it back up again. These will take a little while to run. So um, because it, there are uh, 66 fault vertices where we can apply impulses. So while they're running, are there any quick um, questions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it gets projected. Yeah, it gets projected. Right. So, um, yeah, if you wanted to be uh, more precise, you would. You might want to do it just down on the fault plane. This was kind of just to demonstrate how that works. So that would be another user exercise is do it in a geoprojected coordinate system on the fault plane. Still be it, um, uh, your data dimension would still be two because you're just, yeah, so. Oh. Yeah, that's right. You'd have to switch from a simple grid DB uh, if you did it on the fault. Yeah. Okay, so I'll. Go ahead and open that back up. But we have to wait till they finish running. Almost there. Okay, so that one's done. I'll go ahead. All right, so just to see what we've created, we'll go
So there's, uh, let's do the update. Um, okay, so, and just to, um, so we can see what's going on. Um, first of all, I'm going to get bigger. Okay, so there's our sites and um, Yeah, we're going to look at what happens uh, when we, for each. Uh, that didn't do much. Um, okay, that's. They are. I'll change their color. They might be yeah. yeah, there's only one there right now. Uh, I'll, I'll turn them black. Okay, and okay, well, I still want them bigger. Um, <laughs> Okay, that might be a bit much. Uh, okay, so anyway, you can see that as you um, apply your different impulses, th these are the responses at all of our GPS sites. So we can just make a, yes. It, what time dependent uh, slip? Uh, you can, yeah. So um, changing the slip initiation time is one way to is one way to do that. Yeah. Okay. So we've created all of our um, greens functions. So the next part. Um, is to do the inversion. So I'll, I'll just talk briefly about that. So that's our forward model. And so we're just gonna do a very simple generalized inverse uh, type of thing. So we have our Green's function matrix, which we will form from the Green's functions we just generated. So they'll, we'll be uh, combining the left lateral and up dip components into a single rate direction. And then we're solving for the fault slip. Our a priori estimate for the thing that we're doing here, we're just gonna assume that it's zero. So we're assuming a minimum, uh, minimum moment type of solution. And then we have our uh, observed displacements, which were, uh, they have some noise added to them. Uh, then we're going to have a penalty uh, matrix, which for this simple one is just a diagonal matrix. So you can uh, obviously more sophisticated would be like a Laplacian, something like that. And then the penalty parameter is just how much weight you give to this uh, uh, penalty matrix. And then so here's our, this is the basic problem, Green's function slip observations. And then we augment this with the penalty matrix and the penalty parameter. And then our um, a priori data, which are our slip, I mean, that we're assuming to be zero. We form a generalized inverse. And then our estimate is just that generalized inverse times our augmented um, observations. And okay, now we're gonna get to this part. So. That well, okay. So when you do this, what you typically do is you assign, assign 
range of values to your penalty uh, weighting factor. And then you look at the log of the penalty residual versus your weighted data residual. And what you're usually looking for is the corner of this L curve. So that's the, the point where you figure you're not really um, uh, getting much more from the, from the penalty. Once you, if you uh, uh, increase the penalty more, you don't, uh, or I mean decrease the penalty, you're not fitting the data much better. So this is most regularization with the best data misfit. And then once we do that, we'll, uh, this, we'll look at what the solution looks like for our optimized penalty <coughs> parameter. So the code to do this, let's see. We have a little Python code called slip invert. I'm not gonna go through it uh, really in detail, but you're reading in your data, you read your greens functions, run your inversions, and when we do that, we're gonna uh, output HDF5 results as well as a summary file, which is how we plotted that, that curve. So um, where the really where everything happens is just right, right down here. We're forming uh, this, our uh, design matrix, our data vector for a given penalty weighting factor. We, uh, then we form our generalized inverse. And then finally, the solution is just the dot product of the uh, inverse with your data vector. And then we compute a bunch of residuals and stuff. So that's controlled by the parameters in the config file. So uh, this is our synthetic um, displacements. Uh, we're not going to scale the data. We assume that we know the rake angle. We're giving it a 110 degree rake angle. These are our inputs. So we have uh, left lateral and up dip uh, um, impulses, and we have left lateral and up dip responses. So these are um, our displacements. These are just the impulses that we've applied. Um, then we have uh, our assumed a priori value, just zero. And these, this is the range of weights that we're assigning to the penalty. And then we just give it output file names. So when we do that, okay, it didn't take long. So what that did, it created these output files um, in, in the output directory. I'll make that go away. Okay. Uh, so the first one we're going to look at is just this summary, which just kind of summarizes the data fit. That's just, a, uh, so there's the penalty weight that you applied, your residual weighted data, all of that. So to look at that, We're gonna use this, um, let's see, do I have that one opened up? Nope. Um, we'll just, uh, so this is just a, a Python script that uses matplotlib, which is, uh, as Brad was talking about, kind of a MATLAB replacement. It allows you to do very simply things, uh, plotting, things like that. Uh, so all we do, we load in the data uh, from that summary file, and we select which data we want to plot. Um, uh, we sort it by uh, penalty uh, residual, and then we just, um, that's where we read it. Uh, so we, we read the pen, data weight, weighted residual, penalty residual from our file. We gonna, we're gonna create a log log plot and then just plot it up. So it takes um, just a single parameter, which is the name of your summary file. Okay, so that's this. Uh, 
Oh no, what happened? Oh, it's up and over. Okay, so that's, um, that's what you get. I have actually never used uh, MATLAB, so I don't know how similar it really is, but I think you uh, can basically do pretty much everything you can do uh, in MATLAB. Uh, so you can you could save this. Um, but anyway, the important thing is we're looking here at where our corner of the L curve is. So you can see it's about the fourth point over. So for the penalty, uh, penalty parameters that we assigned, that turns out to be a value of one. So that's our penalty weighting. So then, Okay, I'm going to cheat again. Okay, so what we're plotting here is our predicted fault slip on the on the fault plane here and then um our uh, predicted and observed um, synthetic GPS. So when we created the synthetic uh, GPS, we also created this uh, VTK file. So that allows us to plot uh, vectors of what our observed uh, displacements are. So what we can see is that uh, this is for a very low penalty parameter. You have a really kind of rough, ugly looking solution. And then as you go through, you start getting a smoother, oops, I have to do it with one that actually has a time. So as you increase your penalty weight, you start getting a smoother solution. You're still fitting the data. Uh, so that presumably this one right here was our optimal solution. So it's right around here. So here, here. <laughs> then once you start going, uh, giving too much weight to the penalty, you actually start uh, misfitting the data a bit more. Now, as I said, I believe that I was too kind with my um, uncertainties for the GPS data. So I think that uh, probably a useful thing for people to do is to try adding noise, uh, adding more noise, so you increase the uncertainties in your GPS uh, data. And, I don't know, I think I might have.